everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is just a quick look at one of my favorite G.I. Joe figures from the 1990s. This is bulletproof, both the 1992 and 1993 releases of the character. This is the 1992 bulletproof, and this is 1993, and as you can see, they are substantially the same. In fact, the only difference between them is one of the colors on the figure and one of the accessories. They are otherwise the same. Bulletproof started out as the leader of the Drug Elimination Force in 1992, but since that subset was discontinued for 1993, for his 1993 release, he was the Urban Commander. What I like about this figure, especially the 1992 version, is the realistic military look. Uh, he has a nice green color, he has a tan digital camouflage and tan uh, equipment and details on him, and I just think that looks great. He could perhaps use a bit more color variety, but the color choices are not bad at all. They both missed an opportunity and dodged a bullet on this figure. They've dodged a bullet in the sense that they resisted the temptation of making the accessories some wild, bright color. That happened quite a bit in the 90s. The accessories are the same green color as the uniform, but they missed an opportunity by not making those accessories maybe a different color, perhaps a brown or black something that would add some additional color interest to this figure. The figure's color scheme is really quite basic. As basic as this color scheme is, I will take this color scheme over a lot of the colors we got on other 90s figures. It's really not bad at all. The figure has some nice accessories. He has a submachine gun. Uh, he has a helmet. Uh, he has a backpack. That's something that not enough 90s figures came with. He came with a figure stand, and he came with uh, a spring-loaded missile launcher that's another staple of the 90s. This figure, unfortunately, is incomplete. The helmet is missing the microphone that plugs into it. I used to have that microphone, but somehow I lost it. It must have fallen out while I was handling the figure, and I didn't notice, and it's totally gone now. I haven't seen it, um, and I will probably never find it again. And version 2 has almost entirely the same accessories, and this one is complete. It has the microphone attached to the helmet, uh, and that is the same helmet and microphone that would have come with version 1. Uh, so I guess I could consider both of them complete, since I do have a microphone that they could share. They didn't change much when it comes to accessories on version 2. He had the same basic accessories as version 1. Uh, his spring-loaded missile launcher is the same, but it is in an opaque green plastic rather than the translucent green plastic of version 1. Uh, this version 1 spring-loaded missile launcher has a light up feature which the version 2 missile launcher does not have. Of course they each came with one green missile. The primary difference between the two figures is really in the camouflage color. Instead of that nice subtle tan color on the camouflage and the details, now we have bright yellow. We should have known the 90s could not help themselves. They managed to give us one reasonably realistic looking military figure, but that's about as far as they could go. Version 2 has to go over over the top with some bright yellow color. Despite this unfortunate color change, this figure is still more realistic than a lot of the other figures we got in the 90s. I genuinely like Bulletproof, especially version 1 from 1992. It's one of those gems from the 90s that I'm just thrilled to find. I look forward to reviewing it. In fact, I would have already reviewed it, except I was missing that microphone. I don't know exactly when I will get to a full review of Bulletproof. I hope it will be in the near future. When I do review it, it will be a chance for us to look at DEF again. That was one of G.I. Joe's attempts to have a social conscience. It's definitely not the strangest thing to come out of the 90s. And even if you think DEF is strange, since DEF gave us Bulletproof, a figure I reckon to be pretty good, it may just have been worth it. That was my quick look at Bulletproof from 1992 and 1993. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please stick around. We have full vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews every weekend. If you like G.I. Joe and would like to keep these videos coming, I do have a Patreon. You can support the channel in that way if you want to. I also have a coffee account if you'd like to leave me a one-time tip. You can also find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share. I will see you this Sunday with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.